We're here with Dushan Graalvat, who's head of product marketing for Infineon Technologies. Well, welcome, Dushan. Hey, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, looking at vehicle electrification, uh, what opportunities do you see that presenting Infineon engineers in terms of product development? Oh, there are, of course, a lot of them, and uh, maybe we should concentrate ourselves mostly on the world of hybrid and electric vehicles because we are also very hard working on the classical world nets. Mm -hmm. But uh, considering engineering, uh, of course, there is a big diversification of the market requirements because, of course, a lot of OEMs, tier ones, would have would like to have a unique solutions for them. And, of course, it is difficult to find one size fit, fits all. Hmm. On the other hand, uh, we have, with hybrid vehicles, always a challenge of power density. How to put that much power in so little space, because, of course, if you have combustion engine, you don't have much space to place your electronics. At the same time, you have the high temperature demand because uh, you have a combustion engine that is working on the high temperature. On the other hand, if you look uh, at the electric vehicle, the main challenge, of course, is efficiency. Efficiency is everything because you have to make the best usage of the battery, which is the most expensive part uh, in the system. And of course, for both of them, it's a matter of price, price and price, as always in the automotive world. Well, we'll get to the price in a minute, but with the proliferation of hybrid, different hybrid systems, stop-start systems up to parallel hybrid systems, power split, series hybrids, etc., uh, how is that driving innovation within Infineon? Oh, it's driving innovation a lot. If we start with micro-hybrids or start-stop system, uh, they are still based on the low-voltage components, uh, and which required us to develop a next generation of low-voltage power MOSFET. And if you continue with mild hybrids like E-Assist or full hybrid like Prius or Sonata platform or even up to electric vehicles like 4DV or, or any other that we have today uh, in the market, it has uh, pushed us uh, in several ways. On one hand, the main thing for automotive is to have automotive quality and IGBTs are components which come from the industrial world. Mm. So we needed first to have a clear setup on how do we implement the automotive strategy and the automotive quality for these components, how to make a dedicated automotive production lines for them, and on the other hand, how to fit these different application requirements. So for example, mild hybrid needs a smaller power module, slower uh, power rates, up to the full hybrid, like a, a power split hybrid or parallel hybrid, that needs sometimes up to 50, 60 kV, up to the pure electric vehicle that needs 100 kV. So it required from us to create a different voltage classes of IGBTs to find uh, IGBTs as a front-end technology that would really uh, have the maximum efficiency, and this is Infineon's speciality, and also how to package them in the best way that the systems are robust and that the system as a system has the lowest possible cost. Speaking of cost and IGBTs, IGBTs have become kind of the fuel injector of electrification in the 21st century, kind of serving the same purpose that injectors would have served on a combustion engine in, yes. some, in some ways. Uh, IGBTs uh, uh, have quite a performance envelope, but uh, powertrain engineers always say, you know, they're costly. So what is kind of the future of uh, uh, insulated gate bipolar transistors? Okay. Uh, well, uh, first to explain this bit, I'd like to show something if it's okay. Uh, the classical uh, powertrain engineers are sort of used to work with a microcontroller being the most expensive part and the microcontroller is maybe as big as one of these dots here. Uh -huh. And these all here are tremendous amount of IGBTs and diodes that need to be placed on the special ceramics and then they also need to have a special sort of a base plate uh, in our case which enables direct liquid cooling. Uh -huh. And of course these all components are pretty costly. And IGPT is today the most sophisticated device in the power world. Interesting. Yeah, but um, of course you're right, we have to go somehow down with the cost of the system. And I say it on purpose, the cost of the system, because uh, just to put down the price of the semiconductor component is not a real solution. We have to think with our customers and also for them to minimize the overall system cost. For example, this is the reason why we have introduced uh, such a base plate for direct liquid cooling, hmm. uh, which eliminates the thermal grease and enables our IGBT systems or IGBT modules to be directly cooled by the liquid coolant. And this enables us also to, for example, uh, operate uh, at higher temperatures or to have less delta T's 
uh, which limits uh, the lifetime of the component. So for that matters, we can reduce the size of IGBT because of uh, superior cooling. And then this, of course, immediately reduces the cost of the system. So this is a good example of Infineon systems engineering at this level. Yes. This is what we are trying normally to do. It's not just to enter some sort of a price war or price cost down, but really to see uh, from all the different systems how to make uh, a sort of a common point to reduce the overall system cost. Very good. If I was an engineer, how would you be selling me on Infineon's capabilities? Buy Infineon. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, first point is the energy efficiency. Uh, what Infineon has unique today in IGBT and diode world is so-called ultra-thin wafer. Whereas the rest of the world for 700 volts technology is maybe around 100 or more micrometers. Uh, Infineon goes down to uh, a 60 or even 40 mm. micrometers. This is very ultra-thin wafer and requires special know-how in handling. But on the other hand, uh, the power losses reduce quadratically with the reducing the thickness of the wafer. Right. And so this is, this is one approach to get the maximum efficiency. Also designing very low inductive system inside such power module we were looking at also increase the efficiency and on the other hand uh, I would like to persuade you uh, on the reliability point because the systems with such robust base plates as we have them uh, they reduce the delta T's uh, in the system and they on the other hand improve and increase the reliability because this is also one very important point if we want this proliferation to continue from hybrid and electric vehicles we have to make them robust, we have to make them reliable, not that the customers come back in a couple of years uh, with complaints that we destroy the, the whole industry. So it sounds like thermal management and thermal solutions have been a big part of your design engineering. Yes, extremely big part, and the other hand is also a design according to automotive quality. Not only according to automotive qualification as prescribed by AC 201 and similar standards, but also living the zero defect policy and this is what we are trying and we also have a huge amount of automotive measures in our production line in order to really sustain this uh, zero defect policy. Dushan, that all sounds great. What's in store for the company? What's the company working on for uh, the next few years? Well, our clear goal is for electric vehicles to be a leader of the world market in 2015 and for hybrid electric vehicles to be a clear number one uh, outside Japan. Japanese market is still somewhat protected and, and kept into inside the Japanese value chain, but apart from that we see ourselves as the market leader in both hybrid and electric vehicles. And you've got to be excited, kind of the turnaround of thinking in Europe. Oh yes. Uh, you know, n not to put down diesels, but I mean hybrids are being given a kind of a new lease on life in terms of product planning, uh, hybrids and EVs as well. What opportunities are there for you? Oh, opportunities are great and uh, I must say I'm very grateful because of this raising of the public awareness and also uh, on one hand government incentives inside European Union, but this is something we also see in US, in Korea, in Japan, also lately in China, and that uh, the governments are uh, punishing the companies that have a CO2 emission above certain level. Mm -hmm. So they are all sort of uh, forced to include a number of hybrid and electric vehicles inside their fleet. Of course, this is a great opportunity for us. And we are, uh, to answer also your previous question, uh, we are working on next generation of IGBTs. We are working on a scalable system, so-called power electronic building blocks. Oh, interesting. And also in a couple of years, when we have pushed the silicon to its limit, we are going to exchange it uh, with the silicon carbide, both with a more like passive component, like a diode, and also controllable component may switch like silicon carbide jade fats. Very interesting. We look forward to a future conversation with you, Dushan. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you.